Do you also feel that there's something wrong with you? I'm on vacation and I should be enjoying life, but all I want to do is go back to my lab and produce some videos. So I was really happy when B-Link reached out to me and asked me to review their latest SER7 mini PC. They were kind enough to send it to my vacation accommodation. So I rushed out to a local computer market, bought a monitor and some other parts and yeah, Let's check it out. This one is really good. We have the Zen 4 CPU architecture as well as RDNA 3 and the performance is outstanding. Here we have some charts. Now these are all the mini PCs that we have been testing on the channel in the past and in the Cinebench R23 multi-thread test. This one beats all the other machines. And here we have Firestrike. So a real highlight is the graphics performance of this machine. I've never had one run games this well. In the box we get the mini PC, two HDMI cables. There's a VESA mounting bracket and also screws. We get the power supply and a user manual. It has a rating of 19 volts and 5.26 amps. An interesting detail, the power supply has a magnetic connector. It plugs in just like this. The machine weighs 0.62 kilograms. It is 126 millimeters wide, 113 millimeters deep, and in terms of height, we're looking at 49 millimeters. Here we have the front of the machine. If you need to clear the CMOS, you can do this here. TRS headset connector at the front. We have USB-C and a USB port. Both are rated at 10 gigabits per second. Power button here with a white activity LED and I have a photo for you to see what that looks like. Heaps of ports at the back, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, very handy if you have a wired home network. The chipset is from Intel, it's the i255V, two USB 2 ports with 480 megabits per second, display port 1.4 and HDMI 2.1, both are rated at 4K 144 Hz. I could only test 4K 60, with the HDMI port and that supports the full RGB 444 pixel format. We're getting two USB 4 ports rated at 40 gigabits per second with power delivery 3.0100 watts. So instead of using this power supply, you can power this machine with USB-C. Both also carry uh, DisplayPort 1.4 and here we have another TRS headset port if you want to plug in your audio device at the back instead of the front. And here goes the supplied power supply. The machine also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi integrated. Wi-Fi is handled by another chipset from Intel. It is the AX200, which will give you decent Wi-Fi 6 performance. Let's have a look inside the machine. There are quite a few screws that we have to deal with. Here we have the memory. The machine is configured with 32 gigabytes with two 16 gigabyte modules from Crucial DDR5 5600. You can upgrade the machine up to 64 gigabytes. We have a PCI Express 4 SSD also from Crucial. It's the CT1000P3 Pro PCI Express 4. This one doesn't have DRAM, so it's a budget solution, but the performance is still pretty decent. Here we have the Crystal disk mark figures. There's a second M.2 slot, so if you want to get something faster, it's easy to upgrade. On this machine, if you want to install a two and a half inch SATA drive, you need to purchase an optional adapter. We have Windows 11 Pro, and before testing, I'm doing all the Windows updates. Then, very important, I'm downloading the latest AMD chipset and graphics drivers and then I'm doing a few tweaks. For example, I go into the power settings and set the profile to high. Also, I went into the BIOS and I'm setting the integrated GPU option to game optimized as well as enabling the resizable bar. And there's an interesting option. You can set the power limit setting from uh, balance to performance mode. This will activate a 65 watt TDP, giving this machine better performance. The highlight of the processor is an AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS with 8 cores, 16 threads. We have 
3.8 gigahertz bass clock which can boost up to 5.1 gigahertz and we have a look at that later testing the machine we have 8 megabytes of level 2 and 16 megabytes of level 3 cache in Cinebench R15 2504 for the multi and 283 for the single core test in R20 6093 for the multi and 694 for the single and here we have Cinebench R23 we're getting 16,213 for the multi and 1,773 for the single core test and here we have the benchmark charts in the multi-core test in R23 this is the fastest mini PC I've tested way faster than all the other ones in the past in the single core test it still loses out against uh, some of the higher Intel machines. This could be important if you want to run emulators like PCM or 86 box, but still the single core performance is definitely improved over previous models. Very impressive are the graphics. We have an AMD Radeon 780M solution from the RDNA 3 generation. 12 GPU cores running at 2.7 GHz and we will have a look later in games with MSI Afterburner and it's doing a good job at holding that frequency. Interesting detail in the BIOS you can allocate up to 16 GB of VRAM to this video solution so that's very impressive. More than many of the yeah, mainstream modern graphics cards. In CloudGate 39,746 in Skydiver 25,634. Here we have Nitrate 31,248 and this is Firestrike 7,740. And I put all the Firestrike results from all the mini PCs that I've tested in the past and look at that, it's beating the competition by a solid margin. And now let's test some games. Dirt 3 is my favorite racing game i tend to test the same game so i can make good comparisons between the machines with the high details we're getting over 200 fps that is absolutely amazing and even with the ultra details 100 plus fps this is much higher than all the machines i've tested so far and really shows that if you're sticking with some of the older games yeah you can game really well on this machine strange brigade is next this one running at 1080p with the Vulcan API and this is the first one where I could select not only uh, medium but even high details. Now with high details it struggles to hit 60 FPS all of the time, it sits around 50 so if you have a monitor with variable refresh rate then this is good news, that means many games will run smooth on this machine. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next. First I tested with the lowest details and yeah, it achieves over 60 FPS. So I tried my luck testing low details, which is a little bit more demanding. And yeah, here we're getting around 60 FPS. Very impressive. And that's without any of the scaling technology that you can enable with AMD graphics. So not a bad mini PC, but can it run Crisis? Here we have the game running at 1080p with very high details of course, supporting 64-bit and the DirectX 10 render path. This is the GOG version and it runs perfectly fine. MSI Afterburner doesn't seem to work with this game anymore, but you can tell from the video capture it runs very smooth. Every now and then you get the usual hiccups because this game is unoptimized, but all in all, yes, it runs Crisis really well. Let's talk about the pricing. You're looking at 729 US dollars as a regular price, but there's a $120 pre-launch coupon taking the total to only 609 US dollars. However, there's a catch. You need to order before September 6. So now we had a look at the performance. We've got the benchmarks. We tested some games. Let me share my own thoughts. I'm really impressed and also very happy that I feel like, yeah, I'm being productive and not too bored on vacation. With the Zen 4 architecture and also the RDNA 3 graphic solution, the performance is outstanding. And yeah, with DDR5 memory, it ticks all the boxes. 
and also the bus tuning 65 watts of TDB it helps just extract a little bit extra performance out of this machine. I don't have access to all my testing equipment so some aspects like the Wi-Fi performance I wasn't able to check out. With an Intel Wi-Fi adapter I don't think there will be any surprises. I do wish they would have gone with a Wi-Fi 6e adapter for being compatible with the latest standard and also the SSD it's an entry-level model without DRAM so maybe a high-end model would be something I would recommend but apart from that really I don't have anything to complain it ticks all the boxes the performance is awesome and it has uh, a nice selection of interfaces for example USB 4 Ava Media has announced it's launching a HDMI 2.1 capture box for USB 4 so that could be something that um, yeah allows content creators like me to use mini PCs instead of a big desktop so yeah, all in all, the B-Link SER7 gets the thumbs up. Really impressed with the performance and the features. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts? And we will be back on Friday with uh, our usual retro content. So stay tuned and I shall see you soon with another one.